Good evening and welcome back. I want to talk to you about something that came up to my mind as I was listening to my audiobook. I'm listening to a seven volume series on George Washington, a biography that was done by Douglas Southall Freeman in the 40s. It is just really amazing to really take in so much about one particular character. You know, I was a uh, history major when I was in college. My hope was to teach history at the college level. And uh, for a number of reasons, I didn't continue to pursue that. But my area of interest was the uh, post-colonial period in the United States. So I've done a lot of research into the founding fathers, but never anything quite as detailed as the depth that goes through his entire life with a fine tooth comb in such a way that it's like you really get to know this man and you get to kind of experience what he's experiencing the way a good novel will do. In this case, nonfiction history that's told really well. You know, if you were to uh, listen to a lot of the modern day uh, talking heads on campuses in academia these days, you might get the impression that George Washington was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and never had anything going against him. But uh, when I listen to this story in detail, nothing could be further from the truth. First of all, for anybody who's ever been in a position of leadership, you know it's never a piece of cake uh, because you have to always make decisions that affect people and, and some of those decisions can be very difficult. Uh, you're fighting with people that are around you or just below you who are sometimes trying to undermine you or pull the rug out from under you. Where so many situations, uh, he just had to grin and bear it as he got through some hairy situation. And it came to a head the other day when I was listening to the lead up to the Battle of Trenton. A lot of you may not be familiar with this, but you might be familiar with the image of George Washington crossing the Delaware on the boat with his magnificent flowing uniform just looking fantastic. I guarantee you it didn't look anything like that. They went through hell that day uh, trying to cross the Delaware with freezing pieces of ice going by, trying to get cannons across the river and guns and men quietly sneaking up. Um, he couldn't get all the soldiers there that he wanted. The generals that he was working with, some of them were trying to undermine his authority, wanting to do it their own way, not supporting him when they needed to for the, for the cause, mostly worried about what they thought about the situation. Uh, not able to get their troops into place. He had to wind up doing the, the, uh, attack against the city because it was the only chance he knew he was going to have, if he even had a chance with so few troops. Uh, but he was about to lose a bunch of troops because they had such short enlistments back then that he was about to lose a bunch of troops at the beginning of December. And if you know the battle, the, the crossing of the Delaware didn't happen until Christmas Eve. I think it was Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, whichever. But anyway, he, he, he caught the, the Hessians sleeping there, basically, or very off guard. And up until that point, every battle they had been involved in was an absolute disaster. His militia men just ran at the sign of anything red. Uh, he didn't have enough army troops at any particular battle. He was always on the run. I mean, it really looked like the colonials were about to just give up miserably and lose this battle or lose this war uh, before it even got started in 1776. And this is the winter of 76. But to hear all the despair that built up to that situation and how much he had going against him and every excuse he had to give in and quit and go home. But his sense of duty, his sense of honor, his faith in God, those things are the things that pulled him through and kept him going, even when everything looked like it was against him. And I would hear about how he would have uh, the severe intestinal issue they called the bloody flux back then. And he would get bouts of it periodically throughout the war. And he had bouts of different things throughout his life. I mean, he had a, a very sickly health about him too, which is amazing that this man was able to do so much. It seemed like he was always laid up. But yet, all of these dark clouds, everything going against him, enough to make you just want to throw up your hands and say, what difference does it make? 
Why should I even press on? And he got the battle that turned it from an absolute disaster to the beginning, the birth of the nation, the United States of America. When you feel like everything is going against you in this life, when you're dealing with the difficulties that come from the, the inflation that's going on, all the market manipulation that's being done, that's causing so much pressure to be put on so many people, so many small businesses struggling, people struggling in their jobs that are not paying what they, they used to because there's just not enough being generated out there. When you feel like nobody around you understands your plight or is on your side, I'm here to tell you right now, there's a lot of people out there like that right now. And I'm telling you also this, have faith. Stick to the things you know that are right. Do what you need to do today and things are gonna work out. It's not always gonna be easy. Nobody ever promised it would be. As a matter of fact, one of the things that motivated me to make this change in my life was when I heard something John Voigt said that really hit him one day when he got down on his knees feeling like he couldn't take it anymore is that it came to him almost like a voice but not a voice but it said to him it's supposed to be hard John it's supposed to be difficult it was like an eye opener for me it's supposed to be hard how many times did I play a video game and get bored with it if it was easy we would just be bored to death if things were easy We've got to have something to challenge us in this life, a goal to reach, something to attain to. So don't let it get boring because it's, it's supposed to be tough. But at the same time, God's there with you. If you have faith and you're walking in him, that's the hard part. When you're having faith and sticking to his commandments as best you can, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a man with a sin nature that works in overdrive. I have to do everything I can to stay on the right plan because I know where my flesh wants to take me, but my spirit wants to take me to a different place. And it's a big part of why I am where I am now. It's my faith. Because if I didn't have faith in God, it would be hard to want to press on and get healthy in this craziness in this world. But I do have faith. And I know many of you have faith. And I want to be able to encourage your faith. That's all I got for you right now. I'll see you next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?